I think it was last week, I, I was reading a piece on The Ringer about Paige Beckers, and I had to have the author of that piece on. So, Mirren Fader, thanks so much for coming on today. Thanks for asking me. So, I, I want to start with this. I, I know you, you've you written on, on so many athletes in, in the sports landscape here. How, how do you, you come up with the idea to, to dive into Paige Beckers a little bit more? I love her energy. I just, I love, there's something about her that is so unique and so interesting. Um And I think it's more interesting to talk with somebody who has not achieved the ultimate goal of what they want rather than Mm -hmm. somebody who has won it all. Everything's gone right. Um, We were thinking of doing this story actually during the last NCAA tournament and it didn't work out and they lost. Mm -hmm. And it actually ended up in my favor that it got punted to the summer um, because then we had stuff to talk about. So, Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I think one of the more interesting parts of this piece is, is kind of that theme of, of the urgency heading into this season for her, for yeah. her. whether it's her feelings, you know, talking to, to Coach Ariema and, and what he has to say about it. What, were you, what did you get out of talking with her about her thoughts really coming into this season and some of the pressure that's associated with it for her? It's very real. It's there. It's very present. But at the same time, There was an awareness and I would say a maturity to not think about it every second of every day, Mm -hmm. because if she does, it will mess her up. It will add more pressure and it really doesn't help. And I think Gino is on the same page with that as well. He's like, you cannot think like that every day. You have to like make your goals that are this big and turn them into this tiny, you know, every single day, what can you do? Um, but they were quite frank. Like you see in the profile, like they were really honest. Like this yeah. is a hole in, in her resume and she knows it and we know it, but we're also not freaking out. We know that it's a team sport. Um, injuries played a role and this could be a different game this year. Yeah. I, I think as, as you, obviously the piece titled the evolution of Paige Becker is, you know, you, you go back to her early days and, and then track her to where she is today. What do you think be- has been the biggest growth factor for her in her game when you when you look back at where she started and and where she is now heading into her last year at UConn she had such a good quote in the piece about um in high school she said she got by on quote talent and I think that's so rare for athletes to be that candid and just say yeah I, I didn't really think about the minute details of the game I was just good you know and and that's so true I think she was naturally better and it didn't mean she didn't work hard she worked her ass off when mm-hmm. she was child and middle school and high school and all of those years but she didn't have to work on things like um recovery and stretching and you know food and sleep and all these things you know I, I, she's such a gamer i just mm-hmm. picture her being like two hours of sleep whatever I'm, i got this you know and and i think now the evolution is just like oh no all these things actually really matter yeah if i want to be at my best then i have to train and rest at my best um, I also think her central struggle, which I'm sure we'll get into of, you know, deferring versus yeah. being more aggressive. I do think she's grown in that. I think that is a constant evolution and she's not going to quote solve the problem before drafts. This is mm-hmm. going to be something for the rest of her career because she has such a big capacity to give and to also score that this is going to be her ongoing evolution. Yeah, and that's a perfect segue to what I want to talk about next. Because I, I feel like that's kind of <laughs> at the, at the crux of this profile here is this, you know, kind of mindset shift from her being someone who is there to really help out her teammates. She'll get hers, but she wants everybody to to get theirs as well. Right. And and I think there's this really interesting paradigm that Gino talked about, I think it was, in terms of being like selfish versus assertive and that kind of being the mindset shift she needed to have. So take us through that a little bit in terms of, how she needs to change, or at least how how she thinks she needs to change, how how Gino thinks she needs to change to become a more successful player. Right. Yeah. I love the way you put that because it is, they do have different, they they do both think of the same thing, albeit in different ways, yeah. and they're on the same page of what they want out of her. So he wants her to be more selfish. That's the word he uses. Yeah. She obviously doesn't like selfish because it has a negative connotation. Yeah. So she- She thinks of it as aggressive, but essentially Paige is such a nice person. She's such a great teammate. She only thinks about her teammates, doesn't think about herself, that all her life she has felt like the giver. Mm -hmm. Gino would like her to be more of 
Diana Taurasi esque F you mentality, as yeah. he said, um, which I love his quotes. Like, <laughs> you guys are so lucky to cover him and these quotes that you get on a daily basis. Amazing. As- as, as I was reading the piece, and we could talk about what it was like to get to, to chat with him for this, I mean, the quotes you have are, are just fantastic. So if, if you're listening, watching, haven't read it yet, you got to go read it at, at a minimum for the Gino quotes. Just for, just not for me, just the Gino quotes. <laughs> like, literally, like, it is so him. He he even cites an Italian mafia boss yeah. <laughs> like the most Gino thing ever. <laughs> Um, but yes, back to your point, um, there are these two sides within her killer and giver. Yeah. And for the first time in her life, she is like, oh, they actually can live together. They can coexist. They're part of me, but I need to be more of the killer if I want to get over that hump and win. Mm-hmm. So this isn't a case of a player saying to a coach, why are you on me? Like, I'm doing all I can. Like, you know, it, she's like, no, you're right. Like for us to win. For me to get over that hump, you're right. I do have to become more like this. So they are very much aligned. But it's hard because if that's not in you, it's yeah. very hard to, you know, change. And so how can she stay the same but be a little more aggressive? Yeah. It, and you you mentioned it a little bit. And I think it was one of the parts of the of the piece as I'm reading it that I, I started to think about it a little bit more. And that was Gino talking about looking at being selfish in a positive way. And I know you mentioned that a little bit earlier. What did you get out of your conversation from him in in regards to that? Because I thought it was really interesting when he's talking to you about you look at greats no matter what it is, business, um, sports, whatever the field may be, the greats always tend to be selfish to some extent. So how does he kind of spin selfish as a positive? Yeah, it it was such a good quote. The one you just mentioned was such a good quote because we don't think about taking time for us, for our journalism, for our art as being yeah. self. But it is because we're prioritizing our passion of journalism. And it's the same with her. Like it, being selfish is not a bad thing, yeah. especially when you want to achieve something. And it just has such a bad connotation. Mm-hmm. But I think the way he like... I don't usually quote, I don't usually include like block quotes, like Hmm. quotes that have like four to five lines, but he was just bar (laughs) after bar. And so like, he was like, it's not, I want this for me. It's, I want this for you and we can have it too. Like he broke it on why selfish is different. And basically it's, there are some people that really are selfish in a negative way, but there are others that are like, Hey, I know what this is like. I want this and I want this for you too. And so- I I need to push myself so that you can have what you want. And that's Paige. That's a good thing. Yeah. I, I know as you talk about this evolution for Paige, do you think she was simply just kind of too humble at this, you know, at, up until this point in her career where she something kind of switched in her where she said, hey, if I want to get over this hump, I, I got to take take things on a little bit more. Yeah. And I think also just the result, especially this past Final Four loss, um, you know, I think one of the main things Gino pointed out was like, you know, if you ask her, like, how did you do? Did you give everything? And I think she, you know, would say like, you know, hey, maybe I deferred too much. Maybe I did this, you know. So I think it's the dissatisfaction almost of coming up short. Um, I think that's the motivator because there were so many times during that last March Madness where she just took over and you saw the killer come out, right? USC game. Phenomenal. And you see both, you see times where she's a little, you know, more willing to get others involved and, you know, kind of waiting to see how the game flows and Mm -hmm. then attacking. But then you see these glimmers of what she can be. And you're just like, where is that page 24 seven? And I think she sees that too. Yeah. A a big part of the the storyline for the evolution of Paige in her career in general has been having to deal with injuries. What do you, what do you think she learned about herself? you know, kind of most importantly, as she was going through these injury setbacks and not being able to play? I think the first thing is patience, which is really, really hard. Um, in the piece I mentioned, uh, signs that Andrea Hootie, the director of yeah. sports performance in there, put up for her. And there were some other ones that she put up year after year. And all of them basically had to do with time and patience um, and waiting. Um, and one of the lessons, this did not make the piece, but I really loved it. And I'm, I'm trying to try not to butcher it. But who knew was talking to like a sports psychologist or somebody, you know, who's in the field about what is mental toughness? Mm-hmm. Who was explaining to me that she told Paige and she relayed this lesson to Paige yeah. that mental toughness is about forgiveness. It's about 
going after it each day, forgiving yourself for whatever you came up short and coming back the next day. And I thought that was such a beautiful definition for mental toughness, because that is essentially what Paige has had to do this whole time. Things did not go the way she wanted it to. Her body did not cooperate the the way that she wanted to, but it is about forgiveness and moving forward. Um, I, I think that takes so much strength and, and inner uh, maturity to for sure. think like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the final thing is like the fact that she was not really on her game as far as nutrition and sleep. It just really shows you the talent level of her because imagine if she had been doing all of that this whole time, look how great she was without that. And so, you know, she's really like taking that very seriously now. Yeah. Football season is here, and you know what that means. Tailgates. Make your next game day spread unforgettable with Martin Russell's Meats. For over 96 years, they've been crafting the highest quality hot dogs, kielbasa, and sausages using fresh, never-frozen meats sourced right here in the U.S. Whether you're grilling up at home or at the stadium, Martin Russell's has the flavor that will make your tailgate the talk of the season. Visit martinrosalsinc.com to find their products near you and to taste the tradition. So obviously a lot of this is her change from, from being a little bit more of a, a deferrer and, and helping out her teammates. What was it like as you spoke with some of her teammates about her and what she's she's meant to, to them? Oh, my God. Like, I did not even really ask emotional questions. <laughs> and um, like AZ was just getting so emotional about talking about Paige. And she was like, it just makes me so emotional to talk about like my sister. And same with KK. Like, I... Again, I wasn't asking about anything very overly emotional, but Mm -hmm. that's how much they care about her. Um, It was really cool because they they each gave stories of like like AZ, like when she even before UConn, she she got hurt and Paige like flew across the country to be there with her after surgery and prayed over her. And just those are things that you don't forget. So, yes, like a national title hasn't been won, but your best friend flies across the country to be there for you after surgery. Like it's really the, the respect they have for her is so genuine and real. And they, they want her to be more aggressive. They're like, she needs to do this for herself. Like she needs to know that we, we want that from her. We won't think less of her for that. We encourage that. I I mean, as you look back at her career, going back to, to the high school days, she's always kind of been center of attention, had the spotlight on her. How do you think she's dealt with that as she's dealt with these ups and downs of her career? Obviously, as women's college basketball in particular has really seen a, a takeoff the past several years here, the spotlight's only growing bigger. So how do you how do you think she's adjusted to, to dealing with that? extremely well and that is so hard to do it's funny because when i was freelancing for espn years ago she was an eighth grader and i was doing a a piece for them on what it is like to be young and famous and (laughs) what it's like to be recruited before you even get to high school and i interviewed her dad for that story Mm -hmm. and he was just talking about how like it's treating her like she's normal treating her like she's not special, treating her like there's, you know, there's nothing, there's no difference between you and other kids. Yeah. Aren't, they aren't giving you all this praise right now because you've done something. You got to earn it. And um, I just love that, like, everyone else saw her as this, like, next generational player. And those around her were like, Paige, did you go pick up my beef jerky? Like, did you go do this for me? Like, you got to, you know, come on, Paige. Like, go and uh it kept her so humble and i love that and you know a lot of athletes say oh i'm humble you know which is like in itself like are you but like she really she really is like it's so genuine with her and you know i think about what she just went through on a a more serious note with this stalker which is horrible which she did not comment on that for our piece um it's really really hard to be a young woman online, offline, anywhere. And it just kind of shows you, it's like, nobody feels safe, you know? And like, she's getting more and more famous and it's getting harder and harder and harder. And she really does want to see herself as that small, small town girl with big dreams because the world is changing. Her life is about to change dramatically in a matter of months. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, we we talked about you know a bit throughout this already, but I, I I've got to ask now. No. Uh, what, what what was your what was your favorite Gino quote you got as you were working oh. on the piece? Maybe even one that didn't make it in there. If there's one that yeah. stood out to you, but 
Yeah. Uh, well, okay. So of course the Bronx tale, I had yeah. to make that the kicker because that was just hysterical. I was like, that is the most you thing ever. Um, Did you have a glass so of wine while he was telling you that one too? You could have brought it out, honestly. Um, what a great, what a great interview. Um, one of them would I think it was in Rio. He was we, it was in the context of the boxing metaphor. He was saying that okay. like come out there punching and instead of like waiting to see what's mm -hmm. up. And then he started on this story about when he was coaching Rio and Tarazi was just kind of playing with them, like, oh, all right, we'll keep you guys in the game. And then he and then he was basically saying, like, get your fuck you mentality, let's go. Yeah. And um, and then she just demolished them, like absolutely demolished them. And he was like, see, what were you playing around for? And he was saying, like, that's what Paige needs to do, like from the jump. Um, it's 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 awesome how much Tarazi's name came up in the interview, especially as you think of the fact that she obviously is on her way out and Paige is on her yeah. way. Out. Thought that was really interesting. <laughs> the other thing was like, you know, the classic oxygen mask. He's like, if you're on a plane, yeah. Paige, I need you to put on your mask. Like he just it's just the the parables, the thing yeah. that just on and on with him. Um, and I thought it was so funny. Paige was like, yeah, he'd be spitting. But um, she <laughs> they are they are a really funny pair. Yeah. Because she was not kidding when she said, yeah, a lot of cussing out Paige. That was freshman year. A lot of him cussing out Paige. And he was like, yep, I challenged her. And I thought it was interesting because, you know, she won every award there was to win that freshman year. Mm -hmm. And she was like, how do you criticize somebody who's won everything? How do you push them when the world is being like, you're great? And I just love that. Like, here she is now all these years later, everyone's saying you're the star now. And he's just like, and you should be better. I just love that he's not, you know, fluffing her up. He's just like, I need more from you. What do you think it says about that relationship and about Paige too? Because you look now with the transfer portal and things like that, you get a coach who might be cussing you out a little bit too much, pushing buttons that don't stick with you. And you might be out of there. Whereas, I mean, she's maximized her time. She could be here at UConn, be around Coach Oriema and be able to to move forward and be successful with it. You know how many leave UConn. There's a yeah. lot that it doesn't work out for, or they stay and they're miserable and they ride the bench and then they just, they're a senior and it's this awkward, you know, first right. starter game. And you're just like, wow, I remember when she was a star for McDonald's All-American four years ago, you know, like that's happened many, many times. Um, and she could do anything. She could go anywhere. Like she literally, she's the same agency as Tarazi and like she, she's built for it to be a pro. She doesn't have to be in a situation where she gets cussed out every right. day. Yeah. But she likes it. Like genuinely not even joking. She's like, I like that he tells me the truth. I like that he's not going to be fake with me. Mm. Um, was it easy? Absolutely not. I mean, you know, one of the things I didn't really put in there, but Gino talked about how like sometimes she'd make excuses, you know, he used mm. the word excuses. And I don't think it's excuses in the way that you and I probably think of it, but it's more just like, I think it's when a coach is trying to motivate you and they basically are saying like, you aren't doing enough. Mm -hmm. He just did that over and over and over again. And she's like, okay, I'm back for more. Like, I think that says so much about both of them. It's very rare in this today's world. I, I'll wrap with this one. And this is something UConn fans probably don't want to even think about, but <laughs> should 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 they not win it all this year? How do you think that impacts both Paige personally and, and just the legacy of Paige Beckers here at UConn? Well, it's funny because I asked Gino that. And originally in my first draft, that quote about how she will 100% feel, you know, incomplete yeah. was like way down in the piece. And we brought it way up because it, I think it's like the third paragraph or something, fourth, something like that now. And that's because... That is the tension. That is the stakes. Yeah. I was going to say, it sets it. the tone. Yeah. Like that, that is what it is. That it's, it's there. We know it's there. Um, and yeah, it will, that will be really hard, but genuinely it's just not something she's willing to accept. But at the same time, it isn't the crazy thinking of like, I got to win. I got to win. I got to win. I got to win. Cause that will mess you up as well. I really think she has it properly stowed in her mind, but not to the point where it's debilitating pressure and she's not focused. Like, I think she, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, but I, it's just my sense. Like 
again, as somebody that like interviewed her dad when she was in eighth grade has like watched her all these years. I I just think Paige is so close to figuring it out. Mm -hmm. She's so close to figuring it out. Yeah. Well, I know everyone's excited to to see her hopefully figure it out. Uh, yeah. Come, uh, come start next month when when they go on the uh, on the hunt to, to win another title. So I really appreciate you taking some time to to hop on today. I hope everyone checks out the piece over at the Ringer. And uh, I've got to say, while you're here, I know you've got a new book coming out. Plug the book so uh, yes. everyone can everyone can hear about it. Dude, shout out to you! Thank you for doing that. Um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I've got a, I've got a biography coming out on Hakeem Olajuwon. Um, it's called Dream: The Life and Legacy of Hakeem Olajuwon, coming out October fifteenth. Um, buy it anywhere. Uh, books are sold online, in store, especially at your indies. Support your local. Yes. Pre-order if you can. It will help uh, keep long form storytelling alive. Thank you. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I hope everyone. I hope everyone checks it out. I, I know I'm looking forward to it. So I really Thanks. appreciate you coming on uh, to talk about this uh, profile you wrote on Page. So thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you.